So as I expected yesterday, the National Hurricane Center has risen the possibility of this disturbance, which is now known as Invest 95L, of developing from a low chance yesterday to now a moderate 60% chance. And at this point, I'm very confident that th this um, chance of tropical cyclone formation will eventually transition into a high chance, as it seems like all the computer models are showing clear indication that we're going to see tropical cyclone development within the next seven days, especially as this approaches the windward and leeward islands and not just tropical cyclone formation but we could potentially see a hurricane in our hands as both of the most reliable computer models are leaning towards hurricane development in the caribbean Taking a look at the latest initialization of the European model, it looks very concerning because we have a major hurricane in our hands by the time we approach the Thursday, July 4th time frame just to the south of Jamaica. And if we were to even move um, into the more long term future, we see a 947 millibar hurricane that's just off the coast of the Yucatan Peninsula. Now, this would easily be a major hurricane at this point, and it's very surprising to see the European model be this aggressive with the forecast, considering the fact that we're still in the early part of the hurricane season. And it's also surprising because the European model was actually a less aggressive computer model when it comes to intensifying this tropical disturbance, but now it's going very aggressive when it comes to the intensity of this tropical cyclone now of course it's 240 hours out so this very well could be wrong on this far out as there's still a lot of time to really iron out the forecast but even if we were to move into a more manageable time period between the next um, let's say 120 hours the next five days we clearly see the european model still does want to de develop a tropical storm and it definitely impacts the leeward and windward islands in this scenario and moving even slightly further into the long term future the european model within the next six days wants to develop of a hurricane just to the south of Puerto Rico and the track is still not exactly known yet what's really going to determine the track is how strong the ridging is because if the ridging is a little bit stronger we should expect a track a little bit further southward so that would um, put areas such as Puerto Rico the Dominican Republic Haiti as well as Jamaica less at risk but that could potentially put um, other Central American countries a little bit further southward more at risk and what's interesting is is that the track could also play a role in terms of the strength of this storm system because the reason why the European model is so aggressive in, in, um, in intensifying this storm system is because the European model compared to what the GFS model is forecasting is taking a track a little bit further southward and what that means is that it's going to be able to avoid the stronger upper level winds that would be a little bit further to the north of this storm system. If we were to take a look at the upper level winds over the next five days with the European models scenario initially over the next four days it should deal with a, a decent amount of wind shear but it still likely will um, develop into a tropical storm despite this wind shear and um, we clearly see that there is an upper level low located just to the north of this tropical cyclone it is bringing a stronger amount of wind shear just to the northwest of this storm system so it's going to be interesting to see how far south this upper level low moves because if it moves a little bit further southward which would certainly be the best case scenario then we could see the wind shear potentially be a little bit too strong to where it might struggle at least initially developing into a tropical storm thanks to this wind shear we also have a smaller upper level low that's located right here but it seems like both the european and the gfs model aren't forecasting this these upper level winds to be strong enough to prevent this from at least developing into a tropical storm because we still see gradual intensification and then by the time we approach the monday time frame when it's just um just a south or at least just pretty much right at the leeward and windward islands doorstep we see that the wind shear does begin to wind down and the reason being is that we begin to see an upper level high move just above the center the low level center and that should diverge a lot of the stronger upper level winds away from the center circulation and create a nice outflow channel um, to the point where likely if we were to see a tropical cyclone in a scenario like this it will inc it will gradually or potentially um exponentially intensify by the time this um approaches further westward because we see that the wind shear is expected to wind down by the time this approaches the caribbean where the upper level um high takes 
um over and really um takes um moves away a lot of the stronger upper low winds away from the center circulation and creates a nice outflow channel which is a big reason why we see the european model wanting to take a track as intense as it is and a strength as intense as it is where we see a major hurricane in our hands but taking a look at the gfs model we see a slightly different scenario at least when it comes to a more long-term future of this storm system so moving forward with the forecast we see that at least initially speaking the gfs model expects around a similar amount of wind shear but expects this storm system to strengthen a bit more and that could be key because the stronger the, uh, the storm is at least initially then that means the upper low winds will have more of an influence with this storm's track because with a stronger storm the cloud tops are higher the overall um, circulation is a lot higher and goes up into the upper levels a lot more which means that the upper low winds have much more um, power when it comes or at least influence when it comes to um, ch potentially changing the trajectory of the storm system and since the GFS model is taking a storm system that's a bit stronger at least initially it does want to take a track a little bit further northward which it would be good news in one way in which that that would mean that this storm would likely be weaker if it were to take a track for a northward because like i said the wind shear does become quite strong by the time um what if it were to move a little bit further northward but of course the bad news is is that this would bring more impacts to some of the caribbean islands such as puerto rico dominican republic haiti and even